dear students today we will be discussing a topic from basic sciences that is biochemistry and in biochemistry we will be discussing about carbohydrates this is a very simple topic if you are okay to do with your uh, basic organic chemistry then you will go very uh, smooth with this topic so let's discuss about carbohydrates so carbohydrates what are the functions of carbohydrates this is very basic thing function of carbohydrate number 1 energetic energetic role by when so when there is metabolisis and breaking uh, catabolisis uh, and uh, breaking of carbohydrate there is release of energy release of energy second is a uh, structural role structural structural role because carbohydrate forms a big part of the intracellular of the intercellular matrix intercellular matrix and different receptors different receptors structural role and thirdly thirdly is the defense okay defense defense role carbohydrate also uh, gives a, a passive defense against uh, infections so against infections infections now what are the types of carbohydrates types of carbohydrates so three types of carbohydrates are there monosaccharide oligosaccharide and polysaccharide monosaccharide mono sa ka right so in monosaccharide uh, what is monosaccharide so basically in monosaccharide there will be only one uh, polyhydroxy uh, carbonyl residue okay only one polyhydroxy polyhydroxy carbonyl residue residue what are the examples glucose and fructose for example okay glucose CH2OH OH OH glucose okay C6H2O6 fructose another example okay take CH2OH again here another hand of carbon having OH 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 and CH2 OH fructose fructose now what is the general formula of uh, monosaccharide so general formula of monosaccharide is cn h2o in under brackets n cn h2o n this is the general formula general formula of monosaccharides and this has been asked in fmg 21 FMGE 2021. This has been asked in FMG 2021. Okay. Now, oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides. So, what are oligosaccharides? So, there will be two to two to ten monosaccharide residues. Two to ten monosaccharide residues. Residues. Okay. for example for example let us take for example what uh, let us take maltose okay okay ch2 oh 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 here also oh it's connected by o OH 
sorry as per the projection this should be like this opposite OH and CH2 OH okay this is maltose maltose and at the end what we have we have polysaccharides polysaccharides saccharides polysaccharides so what are polysaccharides that will be greater than 10 residues greater than 10 what residues what residues monosaccharide residues yes now polysaccharides we can uh, as per the structure of the molecule we can divide it into two categories one will be uh, one will be linear okay and another will be branched okay that is as per the projection okay that that is understandable and as per the types of uh, residues present we can divide divide polysaccharides again into two categories types of residues residues okay we can divide it into homopolysaccharide homopolysaccharide and heteropolysaccharide heteropolysaccharide in homopolysaccharides all the monos, uh, all the monosaccharide residues will be same but in heteropolysaccharides all the uh, residues monosaccharide residues will not be same and what is the general formula of it what is the general formula of it um, remember the general formula like this C3H6O3 plus C3H6O3 okay when these two add up and a molecule of water goes away what we get we get C6H10O5 C6H10O5 okay now three carbon atom three carbon atom you get six carbon atom okay six hydrogen atom six hydrogen atom 12 and minus two from here so you get 10 hydrogen atoms okay three plus three oxygen atoms six oxygen atoms minus one uh, oxygen atom you get five oxygen atoms so this is the general formula general formula of polysaccharides okay now uh, so now if 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 this so how big can a polysaccharide be if this uh, happens n times so the actual the general formula will be c6h10o5 n times and again this has been asked this has been asked in fmg 2021 okay now we move to now we move to glycolysis glycolysis which is a very important topic in biochemistry so what is basically glycolysis glycolysis is basically is basically a process of sequenced sequenced enzymatic enzymatic reactions sequenced enzymatic reactions that convert convert what that convert um, glucose glucose or rather like let's write it like this one molecule one molecule of glucose of glucose into two molecules two molecules of pyruvate of pyruvate with along with along with generation along with generation of ATP adenosine triphosphate in minimal amount in minimal amounts that is basically glycolysis okay so now let's move into glycolysis before going into the stepped reactions of glycolysis let us understand a synopsis of how, what happens in glycolysis okay so for example think that that this is the cell okay this is the cell here you have here you have the GLUT4 transporter the GLUT4 transporter and you have the glucose coming in you have the C6H12O6 glucose coming in now what happens here actually inside the cell just a synopsis glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate G6P glucose 6 phosphate and then glucose 6 phosphate has three variants to undergo metabolysis one is the HMP pathway HMP pathway 
which we will not be discussing on this session one is glycolysis one is glycolysis and another one is conversion into glycogen conversion into glycogen we will be focusing on glycolysis on this session and in glycolysis what happens two pyruvates two pyruvates are generated two molecules of pyruvates now what happens with pyruvate after being generated so if there is uh, enough oxygen pyruvate it co is converted into acetyl coa and what happens to acetyl coa this see in one thing in biochemistry let's be very clear all the reactions which happens are some or the other way linked with the other reactions so when we go on discussing about all the topics then you will understand that each and every reaction is some or the other way connected to uh, other reactions they are connected in, uh, with each other and that is how the organism functions okay so pyruvate goes into acetyl coa when there is no lack of oxygen and this acetyl coa when it, where it is utilized krebs cycle tca cycle yes and now if there is there is lack of oxygen if o2 concentration of o2 is down okay then this is converted into lactate lactate which is anaerobic through anaerobic respiration anaerobic anaerobic respiration okay now what happens uh, with acetyl coa acetyl coa again has a uh, variation like acetyl coa in oxidative phase in oxidative phase okay plus o2 obviously in oxidative phase as i said it goes into tca cycle or the krebs cycle okay tca cycle but uh, apart from that what happens it generates fatty acid it generates fatty acids and fatty acids is ultimately converted into triacyl glycerol so too much glucose is not good for health as well triacyl glycerol now let us discuss glycolysis step by step and i prefer discussing it with the chemical structure of each step because your conception beco uh, becomes very clear crystal clear when you understand the chemical structure of each phase <coughs> okay so first we have glucose we have glucose okay oh oh and CH2OH, CH2OH. By the action of enzyme hexokinase, by the action of enzyme hexokinase and ATP being converted into ADP, glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate. Glucose 6 phosphate. OH, 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 OH but here it will be so phosphate add on phosphate groups add on h2o po3 h2 okay this is glucose glucose 6 phosphate this is glucose 6 phosphate so here is the phosphate group you can see now after this g6p glucose 6 phosphate by the action of by the action of enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase phosphoglucose glucose isomerase please note the point that this is isomerase enzyme so what reaction will it uh, do isomerization yes so fructose 6 phosphate is produced fructose 6 phosphate is produced ch2oh oh Again, OH, OH, CH2, okay, H2O3, PO, this, this is fructose, fructose 6 phosphate, this is fructose 6 phosphate. Can you re uh, relay with the, um, these numberings, 6 phosphate, 6 phosphate? please uh, please recall your basics of organic chemistry where is the first carbon atom where, okay where is the six carbon atom let's see this is six five four three two and one okay so phosphate group on the sixth position of c on the six carbon atom that is why it is fructose six phosphate okay 
now from from fructose 6 phosphate from fructose 6 phosphate 6 phosphate now this uh, uh, reaction is very important this reaction is very important for you to remember atp is converted into adp atp is converted into adp and there is the enzyme which acts on it is phosphofructokinase phosphofructokinase or it is called pfk pfk and it is then it is converted into what fructose 1,6 bisphosphate so there is addition of phosphate group on both the carbon atoms at one position and the, at sixth position okay see this is the first carbon atom ch2 o po3 h2 and this is okay here also there will be oh okay and this is the what sixth carbon atom ch2 So this is fructose 1, 6, fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate, bisphosphate. Point to be noted here, this reaction is very important from the exam point of view because this is the rate limiting this this actually pfk pfk is the rate limiting rate limiting enzyme enzyme of glycolysis of glycolysis okay extra point pfk what are the inhibitors of pfk inhibitors of pfk that is atp and citrate or citric acid and what are what are the activators what are the activators of pfk fructose 6 phosphate okay and amp these things are examiner's favorite things to ask in exam okay so remember this thing this reaction is very important from exam point of view fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate now fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and this reaction is also called sometimes this this step of the reaction is also called um, flux generating step okay this is also called flux generating generating step just remember this but this thing has never been asked in exam until now in none of the exams okay now we move to the next step of uh, glycolysis next step of glycolysis what is there so we have fructose 6 phosphate okay now this is a reversible reaction this is a reversible reaction by the enzyme aldolase by the enzyme aldolase what are generated ch2opo3h2 co group ch2oh ch2oh what is the name of this compound this is dihydroxy dihydroxy acetone acetone 3 phosphate phosphate okay plus plus cho chohh okay ch2o po3 h2 this is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate phosphate now a very interesting happen interesting thing thing happens between these two compounds this compound dihydro uh, dihydroxyton 3 phosphate and this compound glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so what happens between them is the compound dihydroxy acetone 3 phosphate okay uh, ch2 o po3 h2 ch2 oh in a reversible reaction this is this get converted okay well, not converted actually but actually isomerized this gets gets isomerized to ch o ch o h ch2 O P O three H two and what is this? This is 
glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate this is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by this happens this is this reaction is made possible by the enzyme triose triose phosphate phosphate isomerase triose phosphate isomerase okay so there is isomerization reaction so now see see the beauty appreciate the beauty from one molecule of glucose we already have two molecular compound we have two glyceraldehyde three phosphates okay so two glyceraldehyde so until now it is clear the whole glycolysis process so after this from two glyceraldehyde three phosphate again reversible reaction okay there is action of glyceraldehyde three phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme dehydrogenase enzyme and there the 2 nad 2 nad plus 2 h3po3 is converted into 2 nadh 2 nadh plus 2h plus 2h plus and what it will produce it will produce two molecules of This is this compound is 1,3,1,3 bis phospho bis phospho glycerate glycerate. Okay. Now this compound 1,3 bis phospho glycerate 1,3 bis phospho bis phospho glycerate glycerate. In the next step of the glycolysis okay let's write it like this yeah this is again a reversible reaction uh, by the help of enzyme 3 phosphoglycerate kinase 3 3 phosphoglycerate glycerate kinase kinase and interesting thing happens here two molecules of adp are converted into two molecules of atp and it produce and it produce two phosphoglycerate two phosphoglycerate chopo3 h2 okay ch2oh ch2oh two molecules sorry two molecules okay so phospho phospho 2 phospho because in second carbon atom okay okay second carbon atom 2 phospho glycerate glycerate for the exam this step anywhere anywhere you see 2 adp or not 2 adp adp getting converted into atp this is called substrate level phosphorylation okay this is called substrate substrate level level phosphorylation phosphorylation reaction reaction okay and this has been asked in pg uh, pgmee 2015 this has been asked in pgmee 2015 substrate level phosphorylation so now we have two molecules of 2 phosphoglycerate 2 phosphoglycerate glycerate now the next reaction is by the enzyme enolase reversible reaction enolase enolase and we produce we get two molecules of phosphophenol uh, phosphophenol pyruvate so you see we are getting to the structure we are getting to the structure of pyru uh, of pyruvic acid double bond ch2 plus two molecules of water is generated important point to be mentioned here the enzyme enolase the enzyme enolase is inhibited by sodium fluoride this is inhibited by inhib inhibited by sodium fluoride 
fluoride again this has been asked in uh, this has been asked in neat pg neat pg in the recent years i don't remember the exact year now this has been asked in neat pg okay so what we had we had phospho we had phospho phosphoenol pyruvate pyruvate two molecules now two molecules of phosphoenol pyruvate phosphoenol pyruvate pyruvate not a reversible reaction okay single direction reaction this is converted by pyruvate kinase pyruvate kinase enzyme okay pyruvate kinase enzyme again 2 adp is converted into 2 atp so again what is this substrate level phosphorylation exactly substrate level phosphorylation this is substrate level and we get ultimately the final product that is pyruvic acid or pyruvate we get pyruvate two molecules so you see we get pyruvate finally from one molecule of glucose we get two molecules of pyruvate so now what will be the net reaction net reaction net reaction of aerobic process aerobic process we have c6h12o6 that is glucose plus 2 adp plus 2 adp plus 2 nad plus plus 2 H3PO4 we get 2 what we get 2 pyruvate pyruvate plus 2 ATP plus 2 ATP plus 2 NADH NADH plus 2H plus plus 2H2 this is the net reaction of aerobic process of um glycolysis now if there is lack of oxygen there will be anaerobic glycolysis so what happens in anaerobic glycolysis we have glucose then we get 2 3phosphate 2 glyceraldehyde 3phosphate until now all the reactions same and uh, if there is aerobic if there is aerobic process going on we proceed to 13 bisphosphoglycerate okay 13 bisphosphoglycerate but if there is anaerobic if there is anaerobic what happens actually is see how the processes are connected here we had nad uh, nad plus giving adding up to the reaction and producing nadh in the opposite side we have the opposite thing happening nadh going to the reaction and nad plus being produced and what is being produced lactate lactate pyruvate pyruvate what happens actually from this 13 bisphosphoglycerate pyruvate is made and pyruvate is then converted into lactate okay now what will be the net reaction the net reaction the net reaction of anaerobic process so again there will be glucose okay c6h12o6 glucose 2h3po4 plus 2 adp plus 2 adp it will produce 2 lactate 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 is lactic acid both are same thing 2h2o plus 2 atp plus 2 atp done okay now an important thing which i would like to mention all these kinase enzymes okay these kinase enzymes this is an uh, you can say high yielding point okay all these kinase enzymes are actually activated activated by can you guess it's activated by insulin it is actually activated by insulin so with this we come to the end of this session we have discussed what are carbohydrates we have discussed uh, the types of carbohydrates monosaccharide oligosaccharide polysaccharide the types of polysaccharide as per branching and as per uh, types of residues present 
and we have discussed glycolysis the anaerobic process anaerobic process and we have discussed the connection between anaerobic and anaerobic process okay so we end our session here with glycolysis after this we'll proceed with the uh, first things which we have to discuss also in uh, in the chapter of carbohydrates so thank you students for joining in this with this session thank you